is Eddie swears from that moment on, they didn't run each other. And there was a moment where Eddie could have and chose not to specifically because of that conversation. Is there a favorite story you have from the book? One, one that, uh, uh, say you have to pitch the sale of this book to someone and you say, there are lots of stories like X. What's one that you can pick? If you if you need time to think of one, I have one that I love. Okay, go ahead. You tell me. I mean, there's so many. I'm just, I'm blanking out. I mean, I, I'm i just uh, amazed at the things that he did and said. But this is, the, it, no, it's like, it's like Netflix syndrome where the hardest thing to do is decide to watch one thing because you have a million different <laughs> options. Um, I, I, my favorite story though, that Eddie Shack has ever told me, I've told this before on the podcast, uh, but in a different context, Eddie and Gordy Howe had quite a rivalry. I mean, there's no question Gordy Howe, better goal score, uh, better remembered in terms of his, his overall play in the NHL, but on the ice, their physical rivalry was, was notorious. And, you know, as is the case with a lot of players in the league, they uh, went uh, and, and became friends off the ice. You know, whatever happened on the ice stayed on the ice, and that was fine. He was on vacation with Gordie Howe, and they were drinking beer all day. I can't remember where they were, but they started to get into it a little bit and, and started talking about their rivalry and how dangerous it was becoming for the both of them. And Gordie Howe extended the olive branch and said to Eddie... Listen, let's make a deal. You don't hit me anymore. You don't run me anymore on the ice. And I won't run you anymore on the ice. And that's not to say that they couldn't, you know, play rough against one another. But there was no more hitting with an intent to hurt. Uh, and he says, Eddie swears, from that moment on, they didn't run each other. And there was a moment where Eddie could have and chose not to specifically because of that conversation. That idea of brokering a deal outside of the hockey rink and bringing it to your day-to-day -day play was fascinating to me. Well, he, he used to talk about how he knocked out uh, Gordie Howe. Yes. He knocked out, he knocked out Stan Makita. He, yeah. He'd, he'd list all the guys that he'd knock out. Um, but one of it, my favorite, the one story that you hear the most of, because he'd sing it as he comes in the door, is clear the track, here yes. comes Shaq. Yeah. Um, it, it was like you'd hear him come down the hall and clear the track, here comes Shaq. <laughs> it was a number one hit on the Chum Hit Parade back in the 70s. Yeah, which would be kind of like our billboard top. Right. Yeah. A Chum Hit Parade was like what we all listened to when the Beatles came out, and you'd see how long it lasted as number one. And it was based on sales and popularity. I don't know how they did it, but... You'd go, the, you'd go to Sam, the record man, and get yep. your chum chart. And they wrote a song uh, about uh, Clear the Track, Here Comes Shaq, and it was number one yep. for, for a number of weeks. And, and he'd sing it, but then when he'd come in, he'd say, yeah, it was number one until you know who, <laughs> who knocked me off that list. And I, you know, I knew, and he'd, but he'd tell everybody, he says, Nancy Sinatra. These boots are made for walking. Knock me off the list. Isn't that great? Ha, ha, ha. Hey, if there's a song to knock you off the list, Nancy Sinatra's These Boots Are Made For Walking. And in Eddie Shack's case, these cowboy boots were made for, <laughs> for walking and for selling, apparently, according to him, as long as they were signed, they were game used. Uh, I love that story. There are so many good ones in there. Uh, one last one that I, I want to tell, because we are running short on time, but this is a story that makes me laugh every time. We've mentioned before, Eddie was illiterate, couldn't read, couldn't write. Although he was good at signing his name, he could do that. But if you wanted him to sign your Beautiful name, you had to signature. you had to to write down what he did, and he almost wrote it down as as symbols. But he was on the ice, and he was getting chirped from, by the other team for not being able to read or write. Oh, Eddie, you can't read, you idiot! Like get off the ice, this and that. Game goes to overtime. Eddie Shack gets a pass, scores the goal, skates by the opposing bench, and says G O A L goal. <laughs> I love that. I love that story. And one of Eddie's fun, well, one time line is very, uh, well, it's not, I mean, it's a little off color, but uh, he was proud of the fact he came from Sudbury. Oh, yes. And he says, I come from Sudbury. He says, only hockey players and hookers come from Sudbury. <laughs> Which team did your mother play for? <laughs> It's, and he tell now I've heard that joke a thousand times, but yeah. whenever I think of it, it's still funny. Thank you so much for watching this clip of the sign off of Frameworth Podcast. Just a reminder that we have full episodes of the sign off available wherever you get your podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. Make sure to like and subscribe on whichever platform you use. You can find us on Twitter at Frameworth Sport or on Instagram at Frameworth Sports. And hey, if you're not sick of me yet, you can find me on Twitter at Retrograde Mikey. Finally, feel free to send us emails 
emails with your questions you want us to answer on the show, and we may feature you live. You can do that by sending your emails to signoffpod at frameworth.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you with a new episode every single Thursday.